Hi, Stamper fans. Welcome to another Make It Monday. I am Nan Gerlitz, independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois. And I am here to help you connect with your people, whether that's getting together and crafting or you creating things to share with them. It's all about making and deepening those connections. So let me switch the view here and let's get right down to it, shall we? All righty. So we had no Friday night stamping this past weekend. I usually I create something that uh, I made from Friday night stamping, but we both came home from Alaska with COVID. <laughs> and so um, it has kind of knocked us on our butts. So hello, hello, Penny. Um, I'm actually doing much better than the Stamper Man, although he is improving pretty rapidly now, thank goodness. Um, but it's mostly just wiped us out. So, um, and neither one of us still can seem to get a complete deep breath. <laughs> so fingers crossed that improves more and more this week. So, uh, but otherwise we're okay. Uh, we just were not uh, feeling enough energy to come down and stamp for you on Friday. So instead, I pulled out one of the cards that I made to share with you while we were gone. Um, this was actually um, a variation. I had seen something very similar online months ago and had wanted to recreate it. So um, this was one of those that I created for that uh, Card a Day in May challenge that I joined. So I thought this would be a fun one to show you how I did this because I've got a cool little tuck behind slit here. Um, the nice thing about this too, very clean and simple. It only uses um, two colors of ink and it uses two colors of cardstock. So super easy to recreate with very few supplies. Love that. Um, I have a couple of other cards to show you with this cutaway kind of strip example. So be sure you stick around till the end of the video. And let's get down to it. All right. So I'm using two different stamp sets today. You could easily, I could easily have just used the layering leaves, but I really love this sentiment, the grateful for the everyday magic of you. It just seems like it could go for so many different occasions or for no occasion at all. It's a nice little friend card, right? <clears throat> so, and I liked the length and the width of it. So, but I could totally have done the thank you so much or thinking of you or even the hello and gotten the same kind of vibe. So. You could totally do this with just the layering leaves stamp set. Um, and I am using the coordinating punch with that one. This is the bow punch. So really super simple. Um, I did a little extra. As always, the supply list and uh, with full supplies and cardstock measurements is linked in the video description. So you can just click on that and know everything you need to know. So you can just settle back and relax and watch as I show you how this comes together. And then you know that you can just go back and get all those supplies um, later. Um, so I did tell you, I believe in the supply list that you need two pieces of basic white that are five and a quarter by four. As you can see, I have die cut out the middle of one of mine. That's because you don't see anything behind this um, crumb cake layer up here. So I thought, well, we'll just cut out the middle of that white and we'll use that to stamp our leaves on. All about, you know, making your supplies go farther, right? <clears throat> so, and the other one's for the inside of your card, which quite frankly, on a, <laughs> I know you love that, Penny, on a crumb cake card, you could totally get away with just writing inside this card, um, especially with a darker pen. But I do like to have that finished look of the white inside or vanilla or whatever you're using. So, so I opted to go ahead and have that white entered. Entered. <laughs> um, so we'll do some stamping first. And this is another two-step stamp. I didn't even realize that. Just like our racing car we did last week, right? So you've got a couple of different outlines of these leaves. And then you can stamp this will line up in here or these will line up. And this is what we're using tonight. So, so some very versatile stuff going on with this stamp set. It is one of my favorites. I also love all the fonts. So super, super fun. So the two ink pads that we're using, I'm using Pecan Pie because I wanted to make sure our sentiment really showed up. And I'm using Shaded Spruce. And I will show you just how we did 
um, that kind of two-tone effect of the green with only one ink pad. Any of you seasoned stampers know what I'm going to do right now, but we are going to do the outline full strength in that shaded spruce. And then we will come in with that filler. There we go. I love how Stampin' Up! does this. Like, look, it just completely is the right spacing and everything. So very easy to do. We are going to stamp that, and then we're going to stamp off. And then line it up without re-inking. And it's just a lighter tone of that same shade. So we call that second generation or stamping off. You'll hear both of those terms bandied about among the stampers. Oh, sorry. Hope you didn't get seasick there. I wiggled you a little bit. Um, but yeah, both of those terms are pretty interchangeable in stamping circles. And if you use second generation, then you can say third generation and fourth generation. And you can just keep stamping until it's out of ink to get a lot of different tones of the same shade. So there is that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and stamp the rest of our leaves. That's the middle. I'm going to set it aside and not even like put it inside right away like I usually do. So I'm going to take that little cutout I did. Now you can, if you don't have a die cut machine or you don't have these particular dies, you can do the same kind of thing with your trimmer. And I'm going to show you some of those features so that you can do that as well. Um, so again, you don't need all the supplies to make all the cards, right? You can work with what you have until you have more. As we all know, we want more, right? <laughs> Okay, so one of the things I was going to tell you is we're going to use this part of the punch um, on this. So I do want to pay attention to how my punch is lined up. This one's pretty simple. I mean, it's going, you know, top to bottom. So I'll just make sure. And I believe I want to get five of these out of here. So I'm actually going to stack them up pretty close together. And I know you're wondering how I'm going to do that with two images on that punch. I actually am going to need a little bit more white. I should have thought about that and brought over some more, but I didn't, alas. So hold on a moment. <laughs> so I usually have a bunch of white cardstock, just scraps, kind of hanging around. We'll see if this one works. Yeah, I can get that in there. <laughs> um, but I made some of these other samples for you guys today, so I used up some of my white scraps. So moral of the story there for this card, you'll either need a little bit more white or you can just do four leaves. Either or. Dealer's choice. All right, so we'll go ahead and stamp off, fill these in. This was one of those stamp sets that was um, designed, um, well, helped design by one of our million dollar sellers. sellers. Um, I believe this was Rachel Tessman's set. And so when Stampin' Up! demonstrators hit a career total sales of a million dollars, they get to um, work with one of our concept designers and design a stamp set of, you know, whatever they love. So um, Rachel loves uh, punches and clean and simple stamping and um, two steps and all that kind of thing. So, and she loves uh, good sentiments. So I definitely love her um, stamp set as well. It is one of my favorites. And I will be sad whenever it does eventually retire. <laughs> but it's just a good go-to. Like I said, it's got some good images that are very generic. You can use them for feminine, masculine, sympathy, celebratory, whatever. And then these fonts are just gorgeous and, again, kind of all-encompassing. It's a really good um, starter set if you're just beginning stamping, like really good one to have. And then it's got a coordinating punch if you want as well that will just help elevate your stamping. So all good stuff. Okay, so that is all of our leaves stamped. Put this one away. 
this stamp set actually has this cool little like splatter pattern stamp as well. So if you wanted to have this card have a little more um, texture to it, I could have definitely done some pecan pie or crumb cake like splatter patterns all around there. I really like the clean and simple of this particular card, but that's another way to go. Okay. So we've got all those done. I will punch those out in a moment, but let's do all of our stamping right away. So get our pecan pie out and our everyday magic stamp. So you'll notice that the leaf stamp was see-through, it was photopolymer. This one is a red rubber or a cling stamp. So what I do with that, if you've been watching me for a hot minute, you know this one, but I line up my block with my grid lines here. So you can use any kind of grid line paper or anything with a straight edge really. And then I turn my stamp upside down so I can see the words. And I do my best to line up the words with one of those grid lines. So this particular line up here is straight. So I'm just trying to hit the bottom of that line with those grid lines. And then when I stamp it, I will line up my block again and I have a perfectly straight greeting. I love that. <clears throat> so for this one, I want it kind of towards the bottom. So again, I'm gonna line up this cardstock with my grid lines, although, yeah, that's what I thought. I'm just going to line up my um, stamp or my block with the bottom of this. We're going to stamp right there. So that way I know it's straight. So this one's lower than my sample, and that's fine. We'll just have more room up top. <laughs> okay, now we get to the fun part of seeing how this magic happens, right? Close up my stamp head. Okay, so we're going to use our take your pick tool for this tonight. And we're going to use some of the accessories that you can get for it. This, these are the crafters tool pack or crafters tools accessories. So this one has a um, really sharp pokey tool needle guy. It also has a hooked pokey. There you go. Um, so for you, those of you that have a Cricut machine or work with a vinyl, this is great for weeding vinyl. Um, lots of other stuff like that as well. It also has a really cool perforating blade. So if you push it up, it kind of covers that so it's safe. And then if you pull that edge down, then you've got that perforating blade there. So you can make some really cool like tear off bookmarks on your cards or um, coupon books, all sorts of things like that, or just for some cool texture on your cards. And the one we're going to use tonight so we're going to take off our putty tip. And we are going to use the hobby blade attachment. Again, very sharp. So please be very careful, which is why it comes with a nice little cover. And you do want to use a healing mat, um, you know, like a sewing mat, basically. This is one that Stampin' Up! used to sell in a toolkit that we had. So I still have it around because, of course, it lasts like forever. Um, but if you have any kind of a healing mat, that'll work. Okay. Uh, I believe if you have our glass mat as well, that you can use the hobby blade right on that as well. And then you're going to want a straight edge. So I've just got a nice metal ruler. And I'm just going to put that right against my greeting. I'm going to butt my hobby blade right up to that ruler and just go right down one end to the other. I am right-handed, so it's easier for me to flip that around and have my ruler on the left side. And then I'll just, I'm going to eyeball it to make sure I get it about the same length. And there we go. Now, I did tell you that you could do the same thing with your trimmer. So now we've got our little kind of pocket, right? So I'm going to show you how to do that on a scrap piece of um, card stuff. So that if you don't have the hobby blade yet, because you're going to want it, um, <laughs> but if you don't have it yet, or if you don't have a healing mat or whatever, then you can totally um, uh, you can totally do this with your trimmer. Oh wait, what is this? Ah, you know what? You can't use on the glass mat a computer mouse. Yeah, I totally can see that. Oh, there's so many things that mice 
mouses, whatever it is, you can't use a mouse on. <laughs> so this is an old retired color. So I just grabbed it and I'm going to show you on the blade here and the, the scoring blade has the same markings. So you'll see there's a little, there we go. There's a little notch right there. There's a little notch on this side as well. And that is where you're cutting, you know, your, your cut line is. But then on this side, there are also notches there and there. And that is where your blade is sitting. So, oh, I should have stamped so you can see it. Let's do that. Let's stamp real quick on this cardstock so that you know that I can actually do the same thing. <laughs> and I'm not just, you know, blown smoke as they say. Okay. So now, Make sure I'm in camera shot. There we go. Now I can see that, and the nice thing here too is with your trimmer is you've got a ruler on here. So I can see I want to start this, oh, let's say about an inch and a quarter. And I want to end it at about four and a quarter. Okay. So, and the um, cut line is also going to be right in the middle of this. So I can really see where that's going as well. So if you lift it up, and I'm going to use this side notch, and I'm going to put it right at that four and a quarter mark, and then just cut all the way down until that side notch lines up with my one and a quarter mark. Lift it up again, and then I'm going to scooch it over. It's still at my one and a quarter. And we're just going to slide it down till it's at the four and a quarter. And there we have the same little pocket slit. So you can completely do that with your um, trimmer. Now, I also told you that you could do this with your trimmer, right? So let's say we'll use the other side of this. In fact, I will just slice that right in two. Let's say I want a quarter inch um, frame around the whole thing. So I know my quarter inch mark is right there. I can take this down to my quarter inch mark on the side. Sorry, I can't see very well because I'm not lined up with you. There's the quarter inch mark. And I can pull that all the way down. And this is a five and a half inch piece, so I'll stop it five and a quarter. Now what I normally do is I do the two opposite sides first because I'm already at that marking. Up to the quarter inch. And then you can do the two side parts. Line that up with a quarter inch so you know you're a quarter inch in. And now I can even just line that little notch up with the cut line I already have. And voila, we've got our little rectangle pulled right out of there. No need for a die cut at all. <clears throat> so hopefully that's a little something you didn't know that you could do with your trimmer, because your trimmer is an amazing piece of equipment. You definitely know all the ways to use it. All right, so for our um, leaves, I'm actually going to cut these apart. I'm going to show you how to get every little scrap out of your paper. That's my inside. <laughs> so now if I took my punch and tried to get this lined up, it wouldn't be too bad. I've got a little bit to work with there, right? So there we go. But this one that I punched out from here, this might be a little more difficult. Yeah, I don't have enough to grab onto. So then I keep a bunch of these little post-it flags handy. And all you do is
your image and it gives you a little uh, a little something to hold on to so that you can put your well what happened there guys sorry about that <laughs> It gives you a little something to hold on to so that you can arrange your punch how it's supposed to be in there or your cardstock. Boom. You'll have a little bit on the back, but nobody's going to see the back. So who cares? <laughs> the rest of these I can probably punch out okay because I left a little bit of a tab. Absolutely love the coordination of our punches with our images, um, our dies with our images as well. I mean, it's just so nice to have things that just make your stamping easier, right? All right. So while I'm assembling here, I want to know what you all would tuck in that little, where did my card go? There we go. What you all would tuck in this little slit, like what kind of images or anything. I have a couple others to show you at the end. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to put just a little bit of adhesive on the back of that greeting. And then when I tuck my leaves in, I will stick it right to that adhesive. Because obviously this is a great little um, technique for like flower bouquets. But I think we can do other things like, I don't know, lollipops or ice cream cones maybe. Flowers, yep. Yeah. There is a bunch of things. I actually have a couple of things that are neither of the things that we have uh, mentioned. <laughs> so hopefully that will get you thinking outside the box too. Oh, I just noticed like what if you had a bunch of stalks of corn? That would be cool too. <laughs> okay. Put the inside of our card on because, you know, I like to do that first. And now to make this part really pop up, I'm going to use my dimensionals. This will also help those um, leaves stay in place. If you really want a lot of height, you can do double of dimensionals. So you'd remove those backings, put another layer on, um, and then it'll really pop up. I don't think that's necessary for mine. so. But if you're looking for more height, that is always something you can do. And after you've put your adhesive on the back, remember to remove the back of your dimensionals because I forgot to do that last night and I had to pull a layer off so I could get those off. <laughs> I mean, I suppose it would still stick up, right? But it just wasn't sticking. Whoops. How about the white part? <laughs> Let's put a little more adhesive on here because I don't have a lot of room on the white to put adhesive. I'm putting adhesive on here first. I'm not going to press down very hard because that adhesive is going to be over the edges. So now I'll put a little bit more in each corner so it catches the white as well. Now we've got it. Voila. And I'm just looking. I think I used Pretty Peacock on that. So which one do you like better, the Pretty Peacock or the Shaded Spruce? I think I like them both. I took a guess on that because it's been a while since I made that card, obviously. <laughs> and I guessed wrong. Oh, too funny. Now, I did promise you a couple of other examples. So um, how about a nice hammerhead shark? <laughs> a 
So this one is part of the Friendly Fins bundle. So uh, we had coral wreaths and things like that. Um, but I did just do that same kind of, um, uh, you know, sentiment little slit there for him to kind of go through. But with the um, hobby blade, you could easily do that coral and then, you know, um, hop that out of the main card and have him going through the coral as well. So that's a fun, non-flowery thing. And then, who doesn't love the butterflies? So this is actually using our new um, basic beige cardstock. So it's another neutral that we added this year, and it is super, super pretty. And I just used the lemon lolly and peach pie blends and uh, early espresso ink instead of black. So, and again, on a diagonal, so you can just kind of make that however you need it to go, right? But I kind of liked the butterflies just floating through there and coming out. All righty. So that is about all I have for you um, today. Yep, I covered everything. <laughs> So thanks so much for joining me. And if I have inspired you or given you some new tips that you didn't know, I'd love it if you'd share the video so that your friends and family could learn something new as well. So until next time, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping.